They are four of the most common plants we know. We've always thought that we controlled them. But what if, in fact, they have been shaping us? We don't give nearly enough credit to plants. They've been working on us. They've been using us for their own purposes. Four plants that have traveled the road to success by satisfying human desires. The tulip, by gratifying our desire for a certain kind of beauty, has gotten us to take it from its origins in Central Asia and disperse it around the world. Marijuana, by gratifying our desire to change consciousness, has gotten people to risk their lives, their freedom, in order to grow more of it and plant more of it. The potato, by gratifying our desire for control, a control over nature so that we can feed ourselves, has gotten itself out of South America and expanded its range far beyond where it was 500 years ago. And the apple, by gratifying our desire for sweetness, begins in the forests of Kazakhstan and is now the universal fruit. These are great winners in the dance of domestication. A look at nature the way you've never seen it before with best-selling author Michael Pollan. And this relationship of the plants learning how to gratify our desires and our working for them in exchange for this is what I call the botany of desire. It was that very special week in May when the apple trees are in spectacular bloom and they're just vibrating with the attention of bees. And I was planting potatoes, making my little rows and putting in my chunks, and the bees were working above me. And it occurred to me, you know, what did I have in common with those bees? And when you think about it, quite a bit. The bee assumes it's getting the best of this deal with the apple blossom. It's breaking in, it's getting the, getting the nectar, and has no idea that it's picked up this pollen on the hairs of its thighs and is transporting it to another tree in the garden or down the street or anywhere else. So for the bee to think it's in charge of this relationship is, is really just a failure of bee imagination. And I realized I had the same failure of imagination. I was working for these potatoes in some sense. I was planting them, I was giving them a little bit more habitat than they had before. And yet I thought I was kind of calling the shots. So that's when I had this thought that wouldn't it be interesting to look at our relationship to domesticated plants from the plant's point of view. Of course, plants don't have consciousness or intention, but the act of using our consciousness to put ourselves in their roots <laughs> or shoes or whatever helps us to see things from their vantage point. And when you do that, nature suddenly looks very different. We realize we're in the web of nature, not standing outside it. These plants are mirrors in which we can see ourselves in a slightly different way. And as much as this is a story about plants, it's a story about human desire.